603, I'd like to call the uh, October 22nd, 2019 special meeting of the CB Fiber Governing Board to order. Are there any uh, additions or changes to the agenda? There's one thing. What's that? The, the, the two that I sent you. The two that you, oh, oh the, 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 the two documents you mean? No, the, uh, we need to have a, a motion on sort of allowing you to send in the mm -hmm. application for the grant. Yeah, and it, mm -hmm. my suggestion was, <clears throat> because I think that's part of the approved RFP, if we can just, oh. just uh, edit that okay. approved RFP item to be approved RFP mm -hmm. and um, BIG application. Okay. Is that, yep. is that okay with everybody? Okay. <clears throat> any public comments? Any uh, comments on anything that's not on the agenda? Okay. Appointment of clerk. So um, you presumably all got the message that um, our clerk candidate uh, said, mm, thanks, no thanks. Um, I posted it on Facebook jobs and actually got one, one applicant. I'm not sure if this person is expecting that this is a paid, like salaried, full-time sort of thing. Um, but this person lives in Winooski, <laughs> oh, <clears throat> which could work. I've, n I've not reached out to the candidate. I've not reached out to anybody, and I've not heard anything um, <clears throat> one way or the other of other people who are interested. Um, yeah? You're not going to get anybody to do all that without some kind of payment. Yeah. And maybe that's what we need to decide to do here. Can I ask for a strong vote here about how many people around the table here are being paid by their towns to be here? No or are you all volunteers? There's no one here. Andy, is that you? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Uh, we're just starting the meeting. And you're on speakerphone. But you're not gonna, you're not going to get all the, anybody to do what you're asking for on a volunteer basis. Well, we, we managed to get our a treasurer anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, so, so really right now, the, the, the clerk's main job is to take take notes and right. produce minutes, right. um, act as the registered agent for the Secretary of State. Right. Um, Do you remember the woman who reached out to me from Williamstown about five months ago, said she wanted to get involved? She, she, called, she called me on the phone. I may have her name written down somewhere. I, I still have. Do you want me to reach out to her and see yes. if she's in? All right. I also posted it on front page four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So I'll reach out to her tomorrow. So <clears throat> I, 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 think you're, I think you're still right, though. And I think moving forward, we need to strongly consider um, paying someone an hourly stipend to uh, produce the minutes. It doesn't end up being that, mu that much. We end up meeting, meeting once a month for three hours, and if we're paying them, um, minimum wage or even even better you know let's pay them $15 an hour $15 an hour and they take you know four or five hours to produce the, the minutes or if they come to the meeting they can produce them while they're sitting here or if we have the orca recording we can do that as well I, I hesitate to give an hourly salary uh, because hours our salaries have to well they don't have to but you're thinking of benefits I would prefer just as not to cross flat, 32 hours. Just to have a flat rate of we're offering you three thousand dollars for the next 12 months to take minutes in all our meetings, produce them, send them out, whatever so your requirements them. are. So yeah, so so we don't offer benefits to the to the people who take minutes no. for the, for the town of Berlin. No. Um, at at any level, right. you know, we just she just sends us. A, uh, an inventory of the time that she spent, and we pay her, I think it's $15 an hour. Yeah, with hourly, until you cross the 32 hour week threshold, you don't have to worry and about benefits. And you're the treasurer, but you're volunteering, yeah. right? Yeah. Right, right. But I, I just think the, the clerk, tre the clerk, whatever, her, that responsibility is a big one. So it should be compensated. So the, the alternative is one of you becomes the clerk in name, and we hire somebody just to take minutes, which is really the time-consuming portion. Oh. I'm gonna raise my hand to volunteer. But we've <laughs> talked before. <laughs> so we've, we've talked before about uh, also getting minutes from the business development committee, mm -hmm. and so we want to make sure that that's included in your estimate of the time. <clears throat> Any other 
thoughts about this. I mean, we are we are currently, because we haven't changed anything, um, Becca is still arguably the clerk. Mm -hmm. uh, she's not going to be here taking minutes, though. Uh, I'm going to do m my best. Most of what we're doing tonight is in is going to be an executive session. Mm -hmm. I suspect. Um, but thoughts, feelings, yeah. straw poll. I have a question. Yeah. For everyone in general. If we decide on a, a relatively simple and efficient template, would the group be opposed to just revolving that task by meeting? And if you're on a committee, then it would revolve within the members of the, the committee. The right template provided in Word where if right, you're gonna have to have something electronic or populate that later. But I've used that in the past with success. It does it's not, you know. Too laborious. At times, if you're right, if discussion goes real fast, you got to slow it down and ask people to clarify or go back just so you can get it in there. But well, and, and the other thing is that statute only requires us to essentially document the motions and the outcomes of those motions. Right. The, the minutes that Becca was taking and the minutes that we pay for at the town of Berlin are much more detailed. And frankly, we're, we probably don't need to go through the detail that we are currently going through, especially given that there is some wonderful videography going on at yeah. every one of our meetings that if anybody wants to know what actually happened during the meeting, they can simply re refer to the actual record, mm -hmm. actual Agreed. video record of it. So if, if there's, yeah, if we can rotate through and people can just keep track of the kind of the, the high points, yeah, we can maybe not even have to worry about <laughs> paying somebody to do this. I think that's a great idea. Now, I've got a few working. I actually well, I pulled one up because I was figuring I would just start this meeting and just trying to get some of this stuff down. Oh, thank you. To lighten the burden, but you know, I've got a variety of templates that are broken down in a way that's pretty easy to follow. And right, inevitably, when things get into a long, you know, discussion about potential actions or not, right, the two beautiful words that make a lot of the meeting <laughs> minutes very easy to take for that kind of thing is discussion ensued, right? Especially if nothing was decided upon, mm -hmm. right? It, it doesn't. It doesn't yeah. all have to be captured. But, but but the beautiful thing is that if somebody's in, right. interested in what that discussion is, they can still sure. all, always go back to the video. Which is to, I don't think you need the detail. Like you said, if we're just if we're just capturing the the, the, the motions and, and, and uh, all that, I think we're in good shape, especially with that. Yeah. So well, uh, if you're going to set the agenda, also those become like the bullet points for the sections of what gets discussed or recorded in the minutes. Mm -hmm. Just like that's what you know, it essentially becomes just a <laughs> chronological summary of. So we still need somebody to be clerk in name, if not in duty. Somebody who's who will have, you know, responsibility for the Secretary of State, uh, dealing with the Secretary of State essentially. Well, he's one of my best friends, so I would be happy to volunteer for that. Okay. She's All right. Martin Woodbury. So I'm going to move that we appoint Susan Martin of Woodbury to be the CV fiber clerk. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. We have unanimously appointed you, Susan. Thank you very much for stepping up. And uh, Nathan, it looks like you're going to be doing some minutes th this time around. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, if we can drag <laughs> if we can drag Jim into a meeting, we can appoint him to be the clerk, too. I'm sure he doesn't have anything better, to, better going on. Sure. And then he can liaise with himself. <laughs> That would be a perceived conflict of interest, Jeremy. Um, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> All right. Um, and then uh, maybe what we'll do is we can just figure out the, the round robin for our next meeting. If you want to send it out to just, um, uh, everybody on the mailing list, then yeah, sure. um, a copy of one of your templates, and we'll we'll go from there. Yeah. Um, we are. I think we're not going to be able to approve the July, August, and September meeting minutes because Becca still has them. Becca I'm sorry. Not, who has them? Becca, our previous clerk, oh, okay. Becca Schrader, has them, and I, she has not sent them to me yet. Um, so she was going to be handing those off to our um, to our new clerk, but I guess what we can do then is I'll have her just send them to all of us. Yes. We can all look at it, and then so arguably, Susan, you would be <coughs> responsible for those those records, but we'll all have a copy anyways, and we will hopefully be putting those on the website, and that will be less of a um, less of a like personal responsibility on you then. Okay. Anything else about uh, appointments to clerk? Okay, we are ahead of schedule there. Do you want to leave open the front porch forum advertisements so that if yes. somebody does come along, we can just 
Yes, that, that, that would be wonderful. And I, and I hope you wouldn't feel bad if somebody does step up and want to take on that responsibility. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you still I mean, want me to you know, reach out to you? Her name is Marie? Yes. Okay. Yes, please, please do that. And I, that. I'm just hoping that everybody around here has put something on Front Porch Forum or the other town's Facebook page or something. I know I have, um, looking for the clerk. Uh, looking for endorsement. Yeah, endorsement. I've gotten my uh, select board chair to sign the paper. I'm, I'm ready to pop it in the mail. And I have petitions at the town clerk's office as well as the East Callis General Store. Nice. So I just cool. Alrighty. Um, so the next thing, possible executive session to discuss non-public records. Phil, do you want, we talked about this a little bit, do you want to kind of go through your thought process on yes. this? Um, yeah, I had spoken to Jeremy about having um, the executive session at this meeting because as we look at, uh, well, Bob kind of, to me, it all leads up to the RFP. Um, but there's definitely <coughs> some issues around um, strategy, not so much the other two items, budget, annual report. But strategy issues, which I think are, are really s sensitive and um, are kind of trade secrets, if you will, um, that we shouldn't have in the public record because it actually puts us at an unfair disadvantage should um, that information leak out as to what our strategy is. So um, I actually reached out to Jim Barlow, mm -hmm. who was on the board uh, but is still on the policy committee and asked for his thoughts about that. And his sense was um, that we, we could, we'd be within the law uh, to actually have discussion uh, in executive session um, as long as the discussion that we were having basically was tied to that RFP. So I mean clearly that's once we vote on approving that, that is going to become a matter of public record, but all of our thought process and about strategy is not. It's, it's protected, um, and we're not laying out all of, all of our strategy to those who might compete against us. And it may not matter, but mm -hmm. um, that was my thought. Okay. So, um, and I know we, we went back and forth a little kind of yeah, so, 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 so my, my thought is that the, the proper thing that we ought to do at this point is to find, um, with, with a majority vote, find that our strategy and the RFP at present are um, trade secrets mm -hmm. and that, and that um, premature public disclosure of those documents would put us at a disadvantage. Once we once we find that, then we can go into executive session to discuss just those. Once we've had our discussion, we can come back out then and look at approving the strategy, the draft budget, and the annual report, neither of which are trade secrets, um, and then approve the RFP as well. Thoughts one way or the other before we start moving forward with that? Seem okay? Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to move to find that our, um, our strategy document and the RFP are trade secrets and not subject to public records. I'll second it. Okay, any discussion about that? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Abstentions? One abstention? Okay. Um, so uh, that was unanimous with the exception of one abstention. Um, and now what we will do is we will enter executive session to discuss records that are not subject to public <coughs> disclosure. So moved. Okay. okay. Motion, so, so moved by Phil, seconded by, by me. Uh, any further discussion of this? Hearing none, all in favor? It was a, it was it's a the strategy. Final, the final the output is, you the can see. Is in there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here's the um, the budget. Um, I had to include the 2019 expected under grants. I did not include the um, the Cabot 
grant, the $500 grant that we got. Um, that's still ready for us to ask for reimbursement at any point. Um, I did include the, so the formula is 25,000 from USDA, uh, 12,500 uh, arguably from, I think Vermont Innovation Grant and 500 from Cabot. Uh, we have about 7,500 in philanthropic, philanthropic donations. Uh, the 2020 budget has, let me make this a bit bigger. But in order to get the $400,000 match for Vita, I'm guessing that we're going to do um, a smallish portion of that in philanthropic donations. Hopefully we'll get some help doing that. Um, 350,000 in promissory notes, um, loans from people. This is the $60,000 of the uh, Broadbent Innovation Grant. This is the Vita loan. We have a calendar year? This would be calendar year 2020. Okay. Yeah, Jan January's, our fiscal year and calendar years are the same. Okay. 2020 budget, um, capital expenditures. This was something that we sort of spitballed last meeting. Happy to adjust that. $500,000 with 12.5 of debt service. Thank you for identifying that that wasn't being added in there, Michael. I properly did the summation um, so that is accounted for correctly. Stop me if anything needs to change. I, I will send this out to the to all the town clerks and make sure that the select boards get it. Uh, external business development services, including business plan consulting, $60,000, which just happens to be the same as the Broadband Innovation Grant. Um, $5,000 accounting, bank fees, audits. We will have to have an audit because we will we have money now. Mm -hmm. That is something that's going to be required as part of the the uh, broadband innovation grant. Will also be required ongoing as part of USDA um, insurance. But this is going to be odd. That's a, in 2020. It will be an audit of 2019. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we can get us that for us in that. Probably. Is that is is, is that two thousand dollars insurance? Is that is that based off of how we are now, or what you're predicting we're going to be at that particular point in time? Because I mean, you saw the insurance. Quote yeah, you got, I, which was quite I, a bit less than that. I yeah, I'm not sure. Do we do we need to have insurance here at all for, for fiscal year 2020? Probably not. Am I hearing probably not from everyone else too? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, office supplies here, 850. PO box printing. I mean. I think, that, I think that may be a bit high, but we'll see. Uh, legal, I suspect we will need somebody to be reviewing our contract. Mm -hmm. We will need somebody to be um, reviewing loan agreements and such. Advertising, Michael suggested that I boost this up to 2,000. I think it was at um, 750 or something before. I, I suggested 5,000. You decide on two. <laughs> okay, I think. Well, I was just copying it out of your email. The last email you sent me, you said two. So I put two oh, that in was, there. That was an accident if I did type Okay. Two. Is that um, advertising or? Advertising. Is it 10? Oh, no. No, 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 no advertising is two. So if it does. I think two is reasonable. I mean, what, what are we going to advertise? Front porch forum? The world? If we need no, more. T-shirts. T-shirts. I was imagining some serious advertising, but that's. So Google. could be um, mm -hmm. lawn signs as we're getting, trying to get people to sign up, pre-subscriptions. It, it could be brochures. It could yeah. be I think five door hangers. Five? I, I mean, it's all sort of yeah. funny it's money. Five. 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 Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. Um, <laughs> so survey. We're not spending any money on the survey next time around, or are we from the USDA grant? Some of the grants. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, I mean, I'm spending, spending $3,000 for the survey, which I think is the amount that the USDA supposed. Does that seem like, are we going to be done with the survey by the end of the year? Maybe I'll ask that. Probably not. But well, actually, I mean, are you spending the consultant's money in this expenditure side? This is, this is, we're spending grant money and we're spending loan but money. But does that come under the operations? That's what I want to know, the consultant part. Uh, external business development services, it's all, all 60 grand is right there. So we so haven't spent anything from the USDA yet, so mm -hmm. do you want to put more into next year from the USDA? Pro probably. Yeah. So where, where do I put that? So typically it's a miscellaneous box. I, I'm not well, seeing money for the software, for example, for 50 bucks a month, whatever that would so be. So I, 
I, I cannot, in good conscience, as a municipal official, create a miscellaneous line item. You get you get raked over the coals for that. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll see, yeah, business to okay, to what? To seven? seventy-five. Seventy-five. Well, what about the uh, the legal and advertising? Can any of that be spent out of USDA money? Not, not really. Not, not with the line items that we have. I mean, okay. one of the things you could do with some of this money that I've written in is public meetings and have them advertise public meetings. I don't know if that fits that category or not. No, you, I mean, you don't usually need to do that unless you're advertising positions. Put a line in for software. Okay. Where does the little green light? Six hundred bucks, fifty bucks a month. Um, we had that as I think I had that under office supplies tentatively. As I think three ended up being as being about three hundred and fifty dollars a year. I had this as here. Let's do this back to five hundred dollars software. The little green light was. I'm sorry. Was it three fifty? Three sixty a year. So what other software do we need, Michael? Well, let's. It was controversial the last time we talked about it, but there's there's demand aggregation software, there's um, mapping software, there's poll so, tracking so, software, and so, the question was, does it go as part of the consultant's budget or whether we spend some of it? Right, so, so this, this budget is for the towns. This is for us to communicate back to the towns and Understood. say, hey, this is what we're doing, this is what we're going to try to abide by. What we sent last year, was based on a very different plan that we very quickly shifted and changed kind of strategic um, goals quite a bit. So if you think that we're going to be spending $1,000, $2,000 on software, and everybody else here said, you know, doesn't scream back at you or kind of generally nods, then let's, let's do it. What do, you, what do you think? I think much more. But okay. I, but I don't know if we're all going to agree on that. Okay, just and and throw, the thing is, whatever you out. put in there, it's going to be different next year when we look right. back okay. retroactively. So, so th throw out what you think you're going, to, you're going to want for demand aggregation. Everybody talks about it for next, for 30 seconds or a minute, and we put it in or don't put it in. It's not really not that important at this point. Six to 10,000. Six to 10,000. Okay. And so you want to tell everybody again what demand aggregation does for us? And sure. why we should spend six to ten thousand? Sure. It's um, it's a multi step process that includes a form of a survey, but not like we're doing now, at a website and a sign up and a sales platform and a de determine I'm speaking in general terms and I can get specific again in a minute. I, and a final determinant as to where to build first in terms of um, community support. So there are multiple companies that do this. Uh, how many people have already heard me talk about this before? Yeah, I, so. Andy, go ahead. Yeah, I, uh, I don't want to interrupt, Michael. I want to no, that's fine, Andy, go ahead. No, please. Yeah, so I, I, this, is a, this is a really prime example where we get too much into the weeds without enough information. and. Like, I just don't think, you know, short of, you know, having the RFP out there and getting a business and feasibility, you know, information where we can provide some structure is getting into the weeds um, and kind of operational buys like this that are hypothetical. I just, it's a waste of time to me. Um, and I, I also think it, it's us doing the wrong thing. Um, I, you know, great. We're going to have a consultant or an operating partner somewhere that's going to use proper tools. But we as board members aren't, and we need to focus on the bigger picture with the information we have. Thanks for that, Andy. So are, 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 do you think we as a, as a board are going to buy demand aggregation software? No. No. No, no because no. that's what we discussed before. OK. So let's leave so, it. Well, I want to raise that. So it, it's incumbent on us to get the subscribers, not the consultant. The consultant will give us. Here's kind of the averages, this is the history, but it's up to us to get the subscribers. How do we do that? Well, who's getting the subscribers now for uh, EV fiber? Valuable. Right, they're operating They're operating, they're operating the subscription. That's the way right? the, 
subscribers. I, don't know I would, I subscribers. would disagree. I think EC Fiber gets the yeah, subscribers, especially in their early in their early. Yeah. Um, so performs the network functions right, and, and manages right. it all. But I think that EC Fiber's got its own website, and okay. they're the ones that gather. Yeah, this is a branded service. site that's run by, by Valley. Okay. EC Fiber does not have a marketing department. They don't have a sales force. They don't. They're not the ones doing that. Okay, so, so so what I did so that we can put a uh, punctuation mark at the end of this, I put $5,000 on there so that if we do spend money on it, great. If we don't, then we come in under budget, everybody celebrates. Okay. Okay. Um, That's what I was going to recommend anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Jeremy, one question? Yeah. So uh, you get $4 million down for a loan, mm -hmm. and what we'll be getting if we get it is a line of credit, right? Mm -hmm. Do we reflect $4 million here? Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to spend, we're going to get a million the first year, a million the two million the second year. Hey, so I'm not looking at this as a line of credit. When we put in for that loan, that loan is for a very specific build um, project. Which so we draw it down on and pay interest on as we draw it down, yes. not the total number. Hmm. So <laughs> we're actually going to be expending it over a period of time. You're not expending it here in the first year at all. Okay. Just for, I, yeah, I don't know the answer to the question. I'm not an accountant. We do have one at the table. <laughs> so, if we if we have a, a line of credit and we only tap into um, five hundred and fifty thousand dollars of it, do we put it on our uh, revenues as five hundred fifty thousand dollars, or do we put it on as the whole amount? And we put it in the revenues. Period. No, it wouldn't be a revenue. It's a liability. It just moves on a balance sheet. Okay, where do I put it in this draft budget so that somebody I can hand to a town and they're going to see like and understand what's going on? Um, I think it would be appropriate to scale it down to the amount that we might expect we would draw yeah. within the next fiscal year. Okay. So in theory, right, if you if you only plugged a number big enough to bring this proposed FY20 budget to zero, that would be relatively in line with how, how a lot of other organizations... You might put an right? asterisk on loans and just say, you know, it's one million up there and down below it says mm -hmm. uh, the entire loan would be four million dollars expended over n years or something. I'd be happy to help draft a few footnotes to this if you want that are, okay. that are relatively so, digestible for a non-financial professional. Okay, so yeah, we, we will have an open um, public hearing for all of the officials of the member towns if they choose to come to ask questions of this and to provide us with feedback as required by statute. Um, and we can in include that there too. Do you think it makes sense for me just to put a million dollars and a little footnote here saying the entire loan amount is four, four million but we're only drawing down a million, theoretically, next year? Um, I think we could put something to that effect in the footnote. I wouldn't necessarily represent that you're going to draw any additional funds more than what you've outlined in your expenditures okay. category. So I think we're basically really just going to draw it to cover our expenses and we're not going to draw any extra because otherwise, you know, we're just paying interest okay. on it. So these two, the loans and the permitting, those match up. Mm -hmm. And then I will put a asterisk here. I'll do two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of feels that way. <laughs> so if you put an apostrophe before typing it, it'll force it. There, there you go. Yeah. <clears throat> so, two. Entire loan will be. Up to $4 million? Um, so the entire loan will be $4 million. Okay. Four um, <laughs> sure, but, but th this this is our budget. We have to forecast yeah, necessarily. Right. Uh, but we will only draw this amount in the year 2022. Good, super. Okay, anything else that needs to be added to this or changed? What the bottom line look like now? Net 346, 640. It's been 3.8. Yeah. Are we okay with this? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move that we approve the draft CBI, uh, uh, CB Fiber Budget 2020 as presented. I'll second it. Seconded by David. David. Anyway. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, next thing is the. Um, Annual report, which I currently do not that. Uh, 
I'm happy to, to read over this. The first, um, the first paragraph is, is essentially the same as last year's. I won't go over that. Um, I'll go through, uh, I say, with some initial organizational hurdles out of the way, uh, talk about the grants that we got from the Think Vermont Innovation, World Devel Business Development Grant, um, talked about how um, a bunch of different folks from here and from other organizations worked with the legislature to craft and pass H513. Um, talk about us and the process of applying for the broadband innovation grant, the amount of 60000 um, that will get us the feasibility study and business plan. I sent this all out to you uh, earlier today, by the way. Um, with the study and business plan completed, we'll hope, we hope to secure up to a $4 million loan. Up to, by the way. It's like, yep, it does, it does say that there. Um, but I, I, I don't put up to in a, in a budget. Yep. Um, uh, so that's another component of the recently passed H513. This loan will provide the startup funds that will let us build more than 100 miles of fiber and start connecting I subscribers. I would suggest saying an approximate amount, approximately 120. So we'll say approximately 100, how about that? That would be fine. a bit conservative. Yeah. Uh, and start connecting subscribers and start connecting subscribers uh, as soon as spring 2021. Once we have three years of solid financials, we, are, we will pursue traditional municipal revenue bonds to continue expanding the network until all residents, businesses, and civic institutions in all 17 of our towns have the option to subscribe to Fiber Internet. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't we want to say to uh, CV Fiber? That's to subscribe to CV Fiber? So, hmm, it's a grand. I, I did a copy edit of the whole document, which includes some of the Thanks, Greg's talking about. Okay, so given that we're uh, approving this now. Mm -hmm. Well, you just gave it to us today. Yeah. So, so I ran through it. So, so what's your, what are your changes? Some of them are, are simply grammatical and spelling and things like that, but there's other things where um, we have agreed that we are, um, we're certainly going to use fiber, but we're technology neutral, and so this reads as only fiber, and so I changed a bunch of things to okay. reflect that. So, so, so hold on one second. Right. This is this is something that keeps coming back over and over and over, no, Mo no. mostly from you. I, I understand this. I, I have support from others who yeah, agree with that. It's not just me. Believe no, no, me. I, I, I understand that, but is this something that we necessarily need need to to dwell on in this in this report? If it's if it's being distributed to the communities, yes, I think so. Okay, straw poll. I mean, are any thoughts about this? I don't this? think so. I don't think people care how they get high speed internet. Okay, and, and which is why I describe it as broadband and high speed internet as opposed to fiber internet. Okay. But you know, it's okay if you don't. But I. I thought we should be accurate. Um, well, let me ask you this: Is fiber it's going to go to the wireless, right? Excuse me. The WW fiber going to the wireless? Of course. Right? Fiber internet. That sounds good to me. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, do you, do you have that printed out, Michael? I can just like tra transfer this sure. directly to it. You could just look it over and see if any of it is, feels appropriate to you. Um. So um, this is something I've, I've taken to doing, capitalizing Central Vermont as the proper name for a region. Um, I, I see that you, um, you did make that lowercase. This is, this is my habit. I don't know if anybody else has that habit or what's it. It's, it's strong very common. It's not important. Don't okay. dwell Keep on going. it. OK, it's a truly uh, high speed broadband. OK. In many places, um, okay, so this was from last year. In many places uh, in central Vermont, and limited access, and in many places, non wireless broadband service is monopolized by digital subscriber line. I'm going to leave that as capitalized. Um, have little incentive. Incumbent providers have little incentive or ability. I like that. Improve speeds or extend their networks. 
uh, internet is, I will argue as a computer science professor, internet is always capitalized yes. unless you're talking about an internet. Really? Ooh, the yeah, internet yes. is yeah, always yeah, capitalized. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez, that just <laughs> and, <laughs> but that is not the internet. Kind of yeah, that's, yeah. I agree with you. But you know, we don't need to quibble in public. Yes, keep going. Access to the internet is is capitalized. <laughs> so yeah, so, so we can bust out the strunk and white. Just go, just go on. Yeah. Just go on. Um, let's see. Is this the one word or is that? Yeah, one word? it is. Yeah. One word. Sorry. <laughs> the spring. It wasn't your fault. To craft and pass internet service providers. I'll relent on this one. <laughs> build fiber and other, okay. Build fiber, internet, build broadband infrastructure and locations where there are a few other options. I'm not hearing anybody screaming in nope. pain. Keep going. Um, we'll let us build, build out approximately 100 miles fiber and start connecting subscribers as soon as second quarter of 2021, I think that's reasonable. Once we have three years of solid financial statements. Thank you. Um, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, towns have the option to subscribe. I got a friend. I, having helped draft a lot of town reports. This will be published in a bunch of town reports, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. This doesn't read to me like it's reading at an eighth grade reading level, which is what you should, in order, right, that's the standard. That, that is, that is <coughs> the standard. That is, if you want to make this accessible, if you want the public support for what we're doing, it needs to be, it needs to be accessible. It needs to be, this document needs to be, represent equity and inclusiveness in order to draw in supporters and investors from every walk of life, regardless of, there are so many acronyms in here. There's so many tech, there's a lot of technical jargon, not to us, we're, we're, we're deep in it, but to those people who are reading this for the first time, who are maybe just uh, just moved to Vermont, whatever, this is very complicated. So can I, um, are you volunteering? Can I make a suggestion? I am volunteering. Great. So, yeah. so, so, great. so what, what I'd like to do is I'd like to send this to the select boards. Okay. We will have our public hearing with the select boards. And let me work with you to uh, simplify this so that we can distribute this to all of the towns and all the towns can include this. In I would like to help with that. I believe very strongly that this should be understandable uh, by anyone. Okay. No arguments. Okay. Well, you're on that paragraph. Okay. You say uh, contact me or your town's delegate, and then you don't sign it. Yeah, I had the same question uh, there. Who is me? Okay. Well, you can have, you can do that, that, but just say, yep. hey, yep. submit to Jeremy and your chair. And put your yeah. email address and phone number. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't. I didn't want to own this document. I mean, so I. Have everybody I, call you. Yeah. 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 Thank, you. Thank you for catching that, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Is John Quinn an alternate for Newt Northfield? That's my knowledge. Uh, so. Uh, he he is. However, he no longer lives in Northfield. Oh. He moved to Berlin. Yeah. What went wrong? Lucky you. I don't know. Ooh, okay. ooh, ooh, ooh. He, he moved next to his mother-in-law. You could take okay. Tom Lindsay Never from mind. Woodbury off. He's I have one more su oh, uh, suggested change. The last sentence of that paragraph you're on, if you scroll up, it says, we will be seeking. I would change that we are seeking. Tax I, I think I have that in mind. Okay. Okay. No? Okay, so do we need an updated list? Okay, so this is the this is the up to date list as I know from the communications of the select boards that I've heard from. I've not heard that um, that Skip was removed. Oh, okay, I have to hear that. Okay, I'll, I'll let. I'll yeah. Let so it, if somebody from the select board can just communicate sure. that, reflect that on I'll minutes let, or something I'll, like that. I'll, 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 um, it's it's totally fine that you're here because he because he's not and you take his spot when he's not here. Um, so let me make sure that, that we have everybody right. Barry City is Greg Kelly, Lucas Herring. Is that, yes. Is that right? Yes. Uh, Barrytown is just you, Josh? No. 
Okay. Uh, Berlin is uh, me and Jerry and Nathan. I put you under Berlin, even though uh, you're not technically a, sure. a member, but or a delegate, but you are the treasurer. So package you with us. Um, uh, Andy is still you and Seth and Cabot. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, David and Jared and Callis. Yep. Okay. Uh, Tom and uh, Tom and Tom and East Montpelier. Yep. Okay. Um, I've been forgetting to include him on the CC list, so I started that just today. I mentioned that, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bob Burley and Kent Shaw, I've not heard from either of those guys in a bit, but I'll assume that they're still they're still on the hook. Any, there's it's just you and Marshfield for now? We're still recruiting. Yeah. It's all good. Um, Phil and uh, Lowry. Mm -hmm. Ken and Dan. Yes. Okay. I think, Ray, it's just you and Northfield. I'm happy to put John back on there, although. Since he's moved. Since, yeah, he lives over there now. Yeah, probably more appropriate in North. Okay. Uh, Siobhan, she's the only one in orange. Um, Michael and Jeremy. John in Roxbury. Did he resign, though? Didn't he send out an email? He, I think he, he said he's happy to stay the, alter, the alternate, but was not able to really ever come to the meetings until all of his school board stuff yeah, okay. settles down. It was kind of like a leaving that. And I think t and technically, yeah. um, Fran Covey on the Williamstown Select Board is, is still technically an alternate. Um, unless you hear anything different, Frank, we'll see. And I think Rahm is all involved in the ATV business. <laughs> oh, I heard about that too. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Skip and Susan. Uh, John and Alan. Is there anybody that I'm missing? <laughs> it does remind me, when we asked Becca to be clerk first time around, didn't we ask her to no longer be delegate as well? Or yep, she was, she was no longer a delegate at that point. So if we just made Susan clerk, is there an issue with her also being an alternate? I don't think so. It was, it, the, the treasurer could, it was because the treasurer couldn't be a member of the board we had to act. Okay. Had to do that. So why don't I... Um, you're very alternate. I will make you clerk because that just happened. Look at that. Okay. Okay. Be the clerk. Yes. Cool. Um, if you want people to get in touch with us, wouldn't you want to put in our email addresses? Or I'm going to go out on a limb and say that your select boards or town clerks know how to get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. I bet they don't. Because they <laughs> appointed you. I'm not on the book. The town clerk may know me, but nobody else does. That might be an advantage. So, <laughs> do you do you want your contact information to be in the town report? Well, it's in the town report. That's the thing. If you want somebody from the town to get in touch with me, even my next door neighbor may not know my name. Um, I, so, I would suggest that you don't want a whole list of email addresses in the town report, but that every one of us um, make sure that the clerk knows how to get a hold of us, and we could put sure. a line in there and say. Contact the clerk if you want to get a hold of me. Talk of your, <laughs> talk of your delegate or, or something like that. Or in the town report, put well, the email address. Yeah, well, well, one, one, of, one, of, one of the things that often happens in town reports right at the beginning is that there's a list of elected and appointed officials with contact information for each of them. So I'm on like the Cemetery Commission for Berlin. My name shows up there and there's a phone <coughs> number. That's a good idea, trying to have the town reports yeah. include us. As, as a, well, and so, so in Berlin, the delegates to CB Fiber are listed among the appointed officials in town. We, okay. have, we have a link to the survey online. Why don't we put the link in here? Here we have three sentences talking, telling people how to, they, if they want paper copies, if they want to do this. Because this is this is our report, our statutory report yeah. to the select board. Mm -hmm. And, I mean. One of the most important things you can do is uh, encourage your constituents to complete the surveys. Uh, if you need paper copies, contact me, your delegate, make sure you have some to hand out. Do you want me to create a hyperlink? Yeah, just put the link in there. Or just put a www. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, and, and make it a hyperlink. You just yep. did. I, well, I, I will, I'll, I'll put it in there at, at some point. I don't have the link right. handy right this second, but I'll put it in there. So uh, everybody, Okay with this? Yep. Nope. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm going to move that we approve this with the all of the um, changes and contributions that everybody made today. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Seconded. And uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Opposed? Abstaining? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay, so our next uh, agenda item. Um, we don't really have a strategy, like a strategy document to approve. We did the draft budget and annual report. Uh, the RFP. How would you like to go from there? Thank you. I'll make a motion that we approve the, uh, the RFP. Okay. So, um, and proposed subject to uh, yeah, non technical, uh, non substantive edits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, I, I will second that, but I would like to, not that Robert's Rules really allows for friendly amendments, so I'm just going to go over you, Mr. Parliamentarian, here. Um, and I would ask that you, so we, so both approving the RFP and we said at the beginning that we also wanted to uh, approve the, um, the application for the Broadband Innovation Grant that goes with that RFP and that you authorize me to, to sign that on behalf of the board. Is, is that a... I make that... And okay. Add it to my okay, and I will re-second that. Any uh, further discussion? All right. Well, I want to make sure that we understand that it, it is subject to non-substantive edits. So, yeah, subject to non-substantive edits, and but that you're also approving the application to the broadband innovation grants yes. and allowing me to sign on behalf of the board on that. Wonderful. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Yeah, yep. yep. Any? Yeah, so the, just to clarify, we're voting to approve or to delegate authority to Jeremy to sign the RFP in the, the grant application, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yep. And then, but I have the, my only concern is I have the one specific issue with the RFP approval process. It's pretty important to me that we're pretty explicit that the board has. Yep. It's going to be the full board that's going to approve whoever wins the RFP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think we had we had pretty much consensus on that, Andy. Okay. Then I'm good. Okay. We okay. changed it. In yeah, we did. Okay. So I heard a whole bunch of eyes. Uh, Andy, can I assume that you're an eye on that one? Yep. Great. Okay, all right. Um, all opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Um, Motion passes unanimously then. No. And no, with one abstention. With one abstention, with one abstention or, or your alternate if you're recusing yourself. Okay, that's fine. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, if we could make sure that, that the record shows that M Michael Birnbaum of Plainfield recused himself from that vote. And his alternate, Jeremy Matt, voted in his stead. <laughs> Um, As I would have if I could have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I have not received the minutes from Becca yet for July, August, and September. Um, soon, hopefully. Maybe. Maybe. Um, They're not even required legally to approve any minutes. No, no municipality is. They just need to be posted. Yes. But we still need to post them. Yes. So um, let's move on. Uh, Roundtable, you want to start us off? Yeah. Josh? I'm, I'm, I'm good. David? I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> we did good tonight. Yeah. I had a lot of fun getting to know Jerome. You <laughs> 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 supposed to turn the Jerome. camera on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I had fun getting to know Michael. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm very pleased with the progress that we've made tonight. I think it's important to keep in mind that we ensure that all of our documents, everything that we do is both public but also accessible according to every meaning of that word. I, I was uh, notified by a few members of the Central Vermont Public Safety Authority that they're going to put out an RFP to better understand the radio network and both <laughs> both that is connected to the fiber and that which is not and they uh, would appreciate having their work um, kind of blend in or be um, made aware of in terms of the CV fiber work. Okay. Is there a, do they have anything concrete that they can pass Well, they're going to, they're going to, they're developing the RFP now. I, in, in one of the elements of the RFP, I added a thing about, you know, 
of this opportunities of partnering, I put the central Vermont public, public safety, safety in there. <laughs> Excellent. I, I said I, I just hope I don't disappoint you as a clerk. Do my best. Thank you. Thank you. I'm good. All set. Pass. I'm good, thanks. Uh, we had discussed at the last meeting, meeting starting to meet every two weeks instead of monthly, um, and I think that's great given all the interesting ones we may have to discuss over the next few months, but we may want to start planning them more than two weeks in advance to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, I can make it this week, but we may not be able to do that in the future. Okay. Our next meeting is scheduled for November 12th, um, which is... Which is a regular monthly. Which month, is a, so. our, regular, our regular meeting. Do we want to then schedule something for Tuesday, November 26th? When is Thanksgiving? Thursday. 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 You can always I think that's. I, I think that's a good idea, as, 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 as long as we're sticking to each meeting being no longer than two hours. Yeah. Right? I mean, is that what, that, that's our goal, right? So these meetings aren't going, going on for three plus hours. We can block it and always cancel it. And, and I, I want to in, encourage everybody too that we can, um, we can have more. If, ever, if there's more than one person dialing in that wants to connect remotely, we I can set up something like a GoTo meeting or a WebEx or things like that, and we can do some um, screen sharing yeah. remotely if that's something that, that you have bandwidth at home to handle. Yeah. <laughs> just saying, but, but, but if you if, but if you just want to to voice dial in, that's something that is feasible. Okay. I, I know that's not ideal because you don't get to see everybody's faces. Well, it's kind of nice we just have to look at Andy. Now that your battery's hit. If, uh, if we stick to the two week cycle, <laughs> this, this does land two days well, before Christmas I, or before I, Thanksgiving, I, and the I, next one would be I, one day before I, Christmas. So, so, I might wanna... so, uh, so, so, so this also brings up a, another question too. There are other holidays, uh, there are other religions in the world mm -hmm. who have right. holidays. And so, for example, um, our previous meeting fell on mm -hmm. on a holy day, and we, we yeah. didn't even have the, the the niceness to ask whether that you know, conflicted mm -hmm. for anybody. So, I think if we just keep going with two weeks, and if it causes a problem for anybody, let us know as far in advance as you can. So, if you're saying that um, uh, Tuesday the twenty fourth doesn't doesn't work for you. Dumb idea. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> okay, you, you, you say so. Well, if we have spouses, probably. It's not going to work. I, 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 I have young, young kids, so ar arguably there's something, something. Yeah. Right that yeah, night, yeah. Right? Okay. Um, but for, for, for now, though, um, the 12th, and let's let's talk about the 26th then. I'll, I'll get this, this location for the 26th preemptively. Sure. Um, recognizing that Thanksgiving is indeed the 28th. Um, if we get our RFP, our proposals back for the RFP, we may be meeting on 17th. We may be meeting on some sure. sub, some of other day yeah. Yeah. so that we can specifically tackle that. And I think then, the, since we're not going to meet the day before Christmas, that we should meet two weeks after the November, just before Okay, so 26th, 10th, and 17th. So the 10th would be our regular meeting, right? Yeah. And then the 17th. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can we create a shared Google Calendar or something that would have all of this? You, you, and then you certainly can, John. Jeez. Oh, me up for three things tonight. That's right. Boy. <laughs> or just put it on the next agenda. And we'll yeah. And so, so, so what I'll do is I can I can put it on. Um, if you want, I can just put it on our, our next agenda as like next meetings. And show the next three or four meetings. Would that, that would be make helpful. more sense? Yeah. I'm happy to do yeah. that. I'm happy to create a shared Google Calendar, and we could also have the subcommittees but meetings and all that. Google, so. uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you can use your native calendar app on your phone and just port that down. Yeah, yeah. Jeremy, can I have another one? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> um, first of all, on, on the topic of meetings. I'm going to just put my opinion in. Uh, I would rather have one three-hour meeting in a month than two two-hour two meetings. But be that as it may, we're going to do this for a while, and we'll see how it goes. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was 
um, you might be interested in uh, CUD progress elsewhere. Um, looks like there's probably going to be two to three CUDs being formed in the Northeast Kingdom. Um, and one in Lamoille County, perhaps. Um, I was invited to present to a bunch of Lamoille towns, I think it's next week, it's either next week or two weeks from now. And one of the towns that's being invited is Elmore. Just so we all know that there's a possibility that Elmore might more naturally align with them if they do it. Of course, they'd have to start from scratch again. Um, and I guess that's all. Just wanted you to know there's other stuff happening. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just throw that hand ready to, don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay. I move that we adjourn. Uh, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Nathan, do you have anything that you'd like to add? No. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's why yeah, I think uh, anything I add has already been covered, but I, I, I did want to bring up just looking at the back burner issues that I think as we're starting to now apply for grants and looking at serious funding, that it's time for more town and who was the other one? Um, Washington. Washington to make a decision. So I've not heard back from Washington. I haven't reached out to them as much. Um, I have a meeting with the Moortown Select Board on no, um, Monday, November 4th. I am on their agenda. I will be talking to them and we will know definitively. And if they're going to sit and waffle and wait, or I'm going to say, I, we, 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 we got to go. And so they can choose or not choose at that point. And with that, I will move that we adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Wonderful. Aye. 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 Aye.